We literally want to see zero serious injuries and deaths on our city streets. In the last year or so, we've actually seen a 17% decrease in the number of severe crashes on those roadways where we've made investments. After many months of inflation and higher prices, the Inflation Reduction Act has been sent to President Biden's desk. ABC's Deirdre Bolton reports he's expected to sign it into law next week. Democrats celebrating a major legislative win as the House passed the Inflation Reduction Act. The 220 to 207 vote falling along party lines with no Republican support. The motion is adopted. President Biden with a broad smile as he watched the vote on television. Democrats are calling the $700 billion package a giant win for the American people. We send to the president's desk a monumental bill that will will be truly for the people. It allocates $375 billion over 10 years towards combating climate change, the largest investment in clean energy in U.S. history. We make good on our promise to take on climate change and climate justice with historic investments in green technologies that will cut carbon emissions by 40 percent by 2030. Democrats also touting the prescription drug and health care provisions meant to cut out of pocket costs for millions of Americans. It ensures that people Medicare with diabetes won't have to pay more than $35 a month for their insulin. And it caps out-of-pocket spending at $2,000 per year for Medicare Part D. David Mitchell is fighting cancer and says he spends more than $16,000 a year on medicine. This is going to save me a great deal of money. But despite its name, Republicans argue it won't do much to fight inflation. You cannot spend your way out of inflation or tax yourself out of recession or borrow your way out of debt. Democrats say the bill will reduce the federal deficit by $300 billion and will pay for itself with taxes on corporate stock buybacks and a new 15% minimum tax on companies making at least a billion dollars a year. President Biden will sign the bill into law next week. Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, taking a live look outside with live cam on this Saturday. More clouds out there, still a hot one. Some folks getting showers, but mostly staying to the south today, Sarah. That's right. Most of San Antonio is completely dry at the moment. Few isolated downpours out there, especially out near Del Rio. Today we reached 101. Guess what? That is our 58th 100 degree day. We are now firmly in the second place position, only one day away from taking the gold for the most 100 degree days in San Antonio. I know, a little sarcastic there. But hey, look, there's a low pressure system out in the Gulf. This is gonna bring some good rains to ranchers and farmers well south of San Antonio in deep South Texas. I'll have a look at the future cast. How many areas around San Antonio will see rain? And that and more coming up after the break. Well, Sarah, last weekend we were crossing our fingers and toes, mm -hmm. legs, arms for rain. And you know what I feel like? It paid off for a lot of us. Yeah. Some folks got yeah. good rain on Thursday. I was not one of them. I got I, some. I did too. I'm to sorry. Go. Okay. I'll, I'll hold okay. in my jealousy. Take away the double box before she yells <laughs> at us. It wasn't a lot. But <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Sarah Costa this morning uh, also got some good rain uh, uh, yesterday, rather. Now, looking at the radar, we do have a couple of isolated downpours out there. Not around San Antonio necessarily. It is fairly dry around San Antonio, but up near Bernie, just to the west of Bernie in Kendall County, you can see a little downpour there pushing into that Kerr and Bandera uh, County line as well. Fair Oaks Ranch got a brief shower too. Most of today's rain has been along the coastal plain closer to Quero uh, and in DeWitt County. You can see plenty of flashes of lightning there also near Goliad and in southern Wilson County. You can see a shower that just pushed on past 183 there. And we've also seen some decent rain out to the west for areas like Del Rio. Concan right now getting a good uh, splash and dash downpour there. Uh, and in fact, around Del Rio, just to the south of Lake Amistad, we've seen about half an inch of radar estimated rain. So while we haven't seen much in San Antonio, there have been some other areas that have seen some showers and storms. Outside right now, it's still 100 degrees. Guess what? It feels like 103. We've got pretty gusty winds at about 23 miles per hour. That's what winds are gusting up to. And throughout this evening, you know, after sunset, we're going to see temperatures fall into the 80s. It's
it's going to be pretty humid, mostly cloudy, and uh, winds are going to gust from the east at about 20 miles per hour. All right, let's talk about the weather maker for Texas over the next couple of days. You can see very clearly in the Gulf of Mexico that there's a little counterclockwise swirl here. That's a low pressure system slinging around pieces of moisture into south central Texas. Here's the low right here. It's going to be moving off to the west over the coming days. Now, unfortunately, San Antonio and the Hill Country going to get the short end of the stick here when it comes to rainfall. But as we take a look at the high res future cast, this moisture will be moving on shore uh, early tomorrow morning. So it is not a great weekend for those along the coast. Corpus Christi, Port Aransas, a lot of rain, even some gusty winds as well. As we head into the early morning hours of Sunday after dawn, we'll start to see a few showers and storms for uh, counties, DeWitt County, Carnes County, uh, etc. And then throughout the afternoon tomorrow, one or two isolated downpours will be flung across south central Texas into San Antonio along that I-35 corridor. But you can see that the vast majority of the rain tomorrow will be well south of San Antonio, south of Highway 90. A lot of area ranch lands and farmland out there going to be getting good drinks of water. But again, San Antonio is going to be on the edge of that, unfortunately. As we head into late Sunday night, that low will be closer to Laredo. And as we head into Monday, in the early morning hours, San Antonio has a slightly better chance for some rain, still only about a 30 to 40% chance for widely scattered downpours Monday morning. Most of the rainfall will be across the Winter Garden region, which desperately needs that rain as well. In fact, all of Texas needs the rainfall, but by Monday afternoon, that low evening, rather, that low will be well to the west of South Central Texas. So how much rain? Yeah, around San Antonio, if you get a shower, less than a quarter of an inch of rainfall. So unfortunately, not a great chance for us in San Antonio in the hill country. But for areas from Del Rio to Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, southern Atascosa County, up to about an inch of rainfall. Again, that's good for those ranch lands and farmlands down there. And then those who are really going to be getting a lot of rain, Laredo to Corpus Christi to the Rio Grande Valley, two to five inches of rainfall, even the potential for some flooding issues down there that far south uh, of San Antonio and uh, of our viewing area. So your KSAT 12 hour forecast waking up tomorrow at 78. It's going to be a warm morning. We'll see partly cloudy skies. Clouds will actually increase during the day tomorrow because of that low. And it's after about 2 p.m. that we'll see a 30% chance for an isolated downpour. High temperature tomorrow only 94 because of the extra clouds and the small chance for rain. East winds at about 10 to 20 gusting up to 30 miles per hour. It is going to stay humid tomorrow because we have that tropical air mass in place. So that means even though the high will be 94, it will still feel like 100 degrees outside. Here's the forecast seed index for the afternoon tomorrow. As we look into next week, a 30% chance on Monday, again, especially in the morning, then we'll be seeing temperatures rebound to near 100 degrees by the middle of the week and into the uh, weekend as well. Tim, Courtney. Well, you know, at least those rain chances are there. Yeah. If somebody gets it, we're happy for them. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Larry is here. Preseason is finally underway. We've been waiting a long time to see teams get to hit somebody other than their own teammates. So now it's underway. Yeah, it is underway. And tonight the Denver Broncos will host the Dallas Cowboys in their first preseason game. And Dak Prescott was asked, does he really need to play in a preseason contest? And a minor league baseball player who played 863 games in the minors finally got called up. We have an emotional phone call with his mother coming up. Honestly, I don't really think about it. Shoot, probably the main time I think about it is, you know, uh, when I'm lifting weights, like, not too bad. Marcus Davenport is talking about his left pinky after he had the top portion amputated during the offseason in big board sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. It is preseason game day for the Dallas Cowboys. After two and a half weeks of training camp, they will open the preseason tonight at the Denver Broncos. The two sides held a chippy joint practice on Thursday, but now it's time to play a real game. Most of the big name players will not go like quarterback Dak Prescott. He was asked if joint practices are enough to get him ready for the regular season, or does he need to see some preseason action? 
this was great for me, um, obviously, but this is one week and we got to continue. got to move on to next week and then that third week of preseason. I'm following coach and their plans and uh, whatever they have for me, I'll be ready. And that's how I've always been. Broncos will host the Cowboys tonight at 8. Denver safety Caden Stearns is entering his second NFL season. The Houston Texans will host the New Orleans Saints tonight at 7 at NRG Stadium. Earlier this week, head coach Lovely Smith told the media that QB1 at Davis Mills will play tonight, but he didn't say for how long. Rookie safety Jalen Petrie out of Baylor is certainly ready to go. The second round draft pick was asked how is he connecting with his head coach, Lovey Smith. We're connecting well. Coach Lovey is great. You know, he's a very energetic guy. Very funny, you know, he has some jokes here and there, but you know, he's also very serious. He wants us to get turnovers and he wants us to run to the ball. So, you know, I'm trying to do that and I'm trying to bring that whenever I'm out, out there on the field. Texans tweeted a picture of tonight's game day uniform and said, keeping a classy blue jersey, blue helmet, white pants, and blue socks. Saints defensive end Marcus Davenport returned to practice earlier this week in limited fashion as he continues to work his way back from injury. He was placed on the physically unable to perform list to start training camp. The first round draft pick had offseason shoulder surgery, and he also had the top part of his left pinky amputated. He originally injured the finger in college, and a plate was put in last year. The plate broke, however, causing an infection that led to amputation. Entering his fifth season, Marcus says he still hasn't played his best pro football. You know, I feel like I'm not there yet. And so, you know, every day I really get the chance to, you know, especially in these past couple months, really just sharpen my mind. You know, now I get to go make it uh, physical. So the best is yet to come. Last season, Marcus had a career high nine sacks in 11 games played. We are now two weeks away from the first K-Set Pigskin Classic, an all-day football event featuring three games and six teams in Smithson Valley. Reagan, Judson, Johnson, Steele, and Brennan. Back on April 19th, we held a press conference at the Alamo Dome to announce the event, and the excitement is growing daily as we get closer to the big day that will help us kick off week one of the 2022 high school football season. It all goes down Saturday, August 27th at the Alamo Dome, and it's live right here in KSAT 12. Our pregame show starts at 11 a.m., followed by game one between Smithson Valley and Reagan at 11.30 a.m. Judson and Johnson will kick at 3.30 in the afternoon, and the nightcap will see Steele and Brennan at 7.30. Tickets are on sale right now at any Las Palapas location in San Antonio. They are 15 bucks each, and they're good for one game or all three games. After a 2-1 win Wednesday night, San Antonio FC is back home tonight to play Las Vegas Lights FC. Sam Adineron scored both goals Wednesday to help SAFC beat Loud and United FC 2-1. San Antonio leads the league with 53 points behind a 17-4-2 record. The 17 wins are the most in the league, with the team's plus 20 goal differential the best in the Western Conference. SAFC is 4-1-1 all-time against Las Vegas, including 2-0-0 at Toyota Field. And they want to keep that streak going tonight. Kick is set for 8 p.m. at Toyota field. All right, the feel good story of the day is right here. Journeyman Wenton Bernard finally got his chance to play in the majors last night after spending 10 years in the minor leagues. Bernard was called up by the Colorado Rockies and his family was there to see it. Bottom of the seventh hits a chopper to third and races the first but is called out. The play would be overturned and the crowd goes absolutely crazy for Bernard's first major league hit. He went one for three with the stolen base and one run scored in his major league debut. The Rockies showered the 31 year old with love in the dugout. Now upon learning he was going to the show, he immediately called his mom to share the awesome news and it was an emotional video call. Mom, I'm going to the major leagues. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, Mama. I'm going, Mom. I promise. I promise, Mom. I'm going. Come on. I got to figure out all the logistics in a second. They just told me just now. I did it, Mommy. I did it, Mom. Um, okay. Thanks for cutting <laughs> onions in here. Yeah, I mean, seriously, oh, man. That's good stuff. <laughs> he First meant time. to cut. He did this on purpose. Yes, he did. <laughs> First time I saw that, I definitely teared up. Wow. 863 minor league games. Wow. Gets the call up, and he helps the Rockies win that game. I believe the final score was 4-3. to three. How awesome is that? Congratulations to that young man and to Mom for being there all the way <laughs> to the big show. Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back. Get some tissues. <laughs> 
Some isolated showers and storms continue out west toward Uvalde and near Cuero, southeast of San Antonio. We're probably not going to see much rain through sunset in the Alamo City. Only a 30% chance for isolated downpours both tomorrow and Monday in San Antonio. Much better rain chances the further south of San Antonio you live. Highs will be in the low to mid 90s because of a little extra cloud cover. No real good soaking rains though, unfortunately, for the Alamo City. High temperature will be near 100 once again by Wednesday and Thursday. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for watching. See you.